Once we are comfortable with static characteristics of sensors, let us go into dynamic characteristics of sensors or transducers. Dynamic characteristics. As we have seen, these are used to characterize the behavior of a sensor when it is being subjected to a stimulus or input signal. These are time dependent characteristics set with reference to a period. That means the period is that between the time of application of a stimulus or the input signal and the time that the sensor reaches its steady state. In this session, we are discussing about few dynamic characteristics such as speed of response, fidelity, measuring lag, dynamic error, etc. Speed of response. It is defined as the speed with which an instrument responds to a change in the value of quantity being measured. Say if an input is given at a particular moment and at how quick it is responding to the st input signal, it is called as the speed of response. Again, another term is response time. That means it is a time taken by the instrument to reach its stable value from zero once the stimulus is applied. In this diagram, we can see that say this is the output shown and this is the input that we output that we expect that is a stable value. This is a stable value. So, the time taken by the instrument once that input the, or the input is already given. So, it takes this much of time, this much of time to reach the stable value and that time is called as a response time, the response time. Fidelity is another term. It is a degree of closeness with which the system in, indicates or records the signal which is applied on it. It also refers to the ability of a system to reproduce the output in the same form as the input. I will explain this. Degree of closeness to which the system indicates or records the signal. That means a particular signal, say you take the case of a microphone, you are giving a sound that is a signal that is given. Are you sure that the microphone is picking the same signal as such or is it losing something? If it is capable of recording uh, the same output as such, it is a high fidelity instrument. Again, in this, take the case of a CD player where there is a CD. In that CD, some song, your, your, your favorite songs are there. Now, if, if you play the CD, the CD, even the highest quality, if it is uh, copied in the CD, are whether your instrument is capable of picking the same copy, same instrument, uh, the value that is stored and give an output. That means, if the system is able, capable of reproducing the output in the same form at, as, as it is available, then it is a high fidelity instrument. We have heard this hi-fi term connected with uh, our music systems. That means, a system if it is capable of uh, picking the input signal and copying it as such or if it is capable of reproducing the existing uh, output signal as such, then it is called as high fidelity instrument, high fi device. Another character is dynamic character is measuring lag. Lag as you know, it is a delay. Lag means delay of an instrument to respond to the change in input signal in real time. Real time means when instrument is actually subjected to an input signal and how much delay it is uh, taking to respond to that, that is called as measuring lag. We have two kinds of lag typically represented in connection with the transducers. One is a retardation type of lag, that is the measurement system instantaneously begins to respond only after the change in the instrument have occurred. Okay. Now, there is another kind of uh, lag called as time delay type of lag, where the measuring in, uh, system begins to respond after a dead time to the applied input. Dead time means it is a time required by the instrument to begin its response to a change in the quantity of to be measured. Another term is dynamic error. It is the difference between true value of instrument, uh, the, measure, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the parameter and the output given by the instrument with time during the measurement process itself. Uh, I will give an example. Uh, you might, might have done measurement, force measurement in lathe cutting to cutting force measurement and you are using dynamometer to measure the force. Now, 
during the machining process itself the force applied on the tip of or the force experienced by the tip of the uh, cutting tool uh, uh, will be uh, expect it is expected to be shown in the monitor or the device but are you sure that is it showing the same value on the display which is actually available at that time at the tip of the uh, cutting tool it can be different that means even if there is a force happening at a particular moment the output given may be little uh, away from the actual in instant so the difference between the true value and the output that is shown it is uh, 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 that can, it is called as a dynamic error the uh, error between the actual value and the true value again but in the dynamic situation so if this is the actual kind of behavior of uh, the in input and what is measured is this this is actually a better situation where it is actually picking up the same output though it is there is a little delay so there is an error if you take the case at any moment there is an error here there is an error there, here there is an error so uh, this is called as dynamic error so uh, this dynamic error need not be equal uh, or almost uniform like this there can be difference between output and input uh, sorry uh, the actual value and the measured value during the measuring process itself the speed of response and fidelity that we have seen in the previous case slide are desirable characteristics whereas measuring lag and dynamic error are undesirable characteristics overshoot is another characteristic that means in you uh, due to inertia of moving parts or some special reasons the pointer of an instrument may not come to steady position immediately you might have seen this in voltmeter that is when the voltmeter is connected to a circuit the pointer will oscillate like this first then come to a rest that means the oscillation the oscillation is like this and finally it will be coming to rest and this is the main point that is uh, required so there is an overshooting happens and finally it will be stabilizing to the required position so that is called as overshoot another concept is system and order system is a generalized term means anything that can process any input to produce an output or response it's a system if the system behavior resembles first order differential equation it is called a first order system if the uh, it resembles second order differential equation then the system can be called as a second order system I will give an example for first order system this is a thermometer thermometer we know that there is mercury there is a tube even you keep the thermometer uh, uh, subjected to temperature or if you are pressing on that bulb the uh, this will expand the, merc uh, the mercury will expand it will arise through this tube so this is a differential equation that governs what the temperature of mercury is at a time that is here there is only one parameter the length of the column of the mercury is proportional to the temperature here the differential equation that defines the rise of mercury with reference to change in time can be defined with order of a single order differential equation so this is a first order system whereas take the case of a spring balance say uh, you have a spring balance like uh, as usually we, we see and if you uh, add something to the spring balance uh, uh, mass at the end the spring balance actually it is a, a second order differential equation because the spring balance have got a mass it has got spring property it has got damping property also if you see the force balance of all this like a spring force if you consider the damping force and if it is consider the acceleration force or downward force if you balance all these things you can see that the this is the acceleration force that is uh, acceleration mass it's a second order uh, part this is a first order part like damping and change in velocity and there is stiffness and the displacement so the whole equation defines the spring mass system and it the highest order here it is a second degree so we call it as a second order system so this is a differential equation that governs what working of a spring balance so oh, this is an example for a second order system now again we are coming to a review part of this session in the previous session we have seen about static characteristics now 
are you able to verify are you able to list any four dynamic characteristics of a measuring instrument are you able to explain the concept fidelity and measuring lag of an instrument with a suitable example uh, with this uh, if you can do it it's good otherwise please go back and verify and learn it uh, we have uploaded the learning material in our academic management system and the questions are also posted there we can have discussion in the online platform thank you